SAS video tutorial on One Way Innova Part 3. In this video tutorial, we're going to continue off from Part 1. You don't necessarily have to watch Part 2 to completely understand this video. What we're going to be interested in is doing some diagnostic analysis on the residuals. So the first thing we need to do is get the residuals out of here. So we're going to use the output statement on our previous code. So go back to uh, video one if you don't have this code in the data set. Uh, we're gonna name our out data set. So I'm gonna call this CPK out. And then what I'm gonna put in it is R equals resid. And so this is gonna give me the residuals in a new data set. And I'm just gonna run this bit here. And let's see what happens. It says it ran. I can go over here. I can see that I now have CPK out over in my work directory. And that's what I want to get, as I want to get this information. And you notice I have the residuals over here. So now that I have these residuals, I can do all sorts of tests on them, just like I could with regression if you've watched the regression videos. And if you haven't, that's OK. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick proc univariate. And notice that everything's in green, which means I didn't close off this comment. So come over here, close off the comment, and now it should work. So I'm going to use proc univariate. Our data set now that we're going to use is our CPK out. Because this holds the data that we're interested in. So we're going to use proc uh, univariate. And then we needed to do var equals resid. And that should give us what we're interested in. We could do a histogram if we wanted to. Uh, let's see here, put histogram and then slash normal on this and give this a run. And this will give us lots of information for looking at the, some of the assumptions here. So we we'll run this and we'll see what happens. And obviously I didn't run all of this. So maybe there's a problem. So, oh, I didn't spell proc univariate right. So got to be sure you uh, spell things right. Univari. Okay, so let's give this a go. Again, notice making mistakes is part of it. Now this gives us the tests of, of normality on the residuals here. And if you notice here, so the Kolmogorov Smirnoff, it's less than 0 0.01, Carmen von Mises, Anderson Darling. So it's not really good for these. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we're working through this. Um, so if I go down here and look at the picture, I can see, oh, here's the residuals. So there's something still going on in the data that I'm not aware of. And even though I did find some uh, differences, there's still other things that are causing differences that are probably embedded in the data. And that's why this is a good data set to look at, because you can say, wait a minute, it looks like there's still in the residuals two subpopulations, and it might be gender that's actually causing that. So, and that's why we don't get this uh, information here uh, to be normally distributed, because if I look at the picture, it's not, it's bimodal. So just keep that in mind. So we've now checked for, um, normality of the residuals, we can look for constant variance, and uh, that's pretty easy to do as well. We can do a Levine's test, but in order to do that, uh, we need to uh, create the absolute value of the residuals. So let's do, try to do Levine's test, which is going to be two uh, steps here. We're going to do a data step, and then we're going to do a PROC GLM uh, test or Brock GLM step. So Levine's test for constant variance, which is one of our assumptions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do data here. Uh, I'm going to call this CPK out two. And the set is going to be CPK out is our basic set. And now we're going to create uh, a new variable called abs resid so that I can use this for my Levine's test. And it's just the absolute value of the residuals, which I called resid. And we're going to run this, make sure that this runs okay. Notice I have had fat fingers today and forgot to put an eye in things. So things run. Come over here. I now have CPK out too. And yes, I do have the absolute value of the residuals. Notice that even where it's negative, I have, so it's turned out to positive numbers. And now what I can do is I can run an ANOVA on this. And that's essentially what Levine's test is, is just running an ANOVA on the absolute value of the residuals. So let's do this. So we can do PROC GLM data now is our CPK out too. 
Okay? Our class is still our treatment. And if we don't remember what we called that, that's treatment like up here. So that's going to be the same. Our model now is going to be our absolute residuals uh, against our treatment. And I don't need to do anything else on this. Okay, I don't need to do any multiple comparisons because if they are different, I really don't care where they're different. I just want to know if there is a difference in this uh, test here. So if it tells me that there is a difference in the variances. Uh, I run this. I get my tests out here. These are my F tests. They're all the same in this case. Um, and notice that I get a p-value of 0 0.0 or 0, 0.2428, which under most people's uh, mind would say there are no differences. That, so that's saying that the residuals essentially have constant variance and we can run with that assumption at the moment. Okay, so this has given us the ability to check some assumptions uh, from our ANOVA. So our assumptions, remember, are you have independent observations, the uh, data is, or the data is independent, you have normal residuals unless you're using a, uh, a test that is for um, randomization, and we assume that we have constant variance, so we've checked that. Uh, so there's really nothing else to check at this point, uh, so we can move on to our next video.